legality of object and consideration before we get into the legality we need to understand what do we mean by object and consideration so let's start with the consideration as per section 2 subsection d yes what is consideration consideration is nothing if something is done for free it does not constitute to be a contract that is what we are trying to say so consideration is something that is very much essential an agreement without consideration is void right it's void if gratuitous promises are made enforceable there would be no risk of person becoming bound although there would be no intention of being bound that is what we are trying to say by consideration when we are saying consideration it means quid pro quo it means something in return if i am saying i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh my consideration to buy that car is like uh, my obligation is to give you rupees 1 lakh and my consideration for that 1 lakh is to get the car same goes for you for you the obligation is to give the car and by giving the car something in return you are getting as rupees 1 lakh in the form of price that is what we mean by consideration gratuitous promises means free promises if something you are doing for free there won't be any intention of doing it there won't be any legal foundation of doing it that is why we require consideration without consideration we cannot move forward right so consideration means quid pro quo section 2 sub section d defines where at the desire of the promisor now who is the promisor Promo promisor is the person who has made the promise so when at the desire of the promisor promisee or any other pro person now at the desire of promisor but who it can be promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing it can be both right it can be doing or not doing also or abstain from doing something does or abstains from doing whatever has been promised is actually happening now does or abstains from doing or promises to do or abstain from doing we are talking about done or abstained from doing does or abstains from doing promises to do or abstain from doing that means we are talking about both uh, not both we are talking about past present and future all the three right such act or abstinence or promise is called as consideration what is consideration consideration is something what you are doing or abstain from doing you have done or like a promised uh, you have done or abstain from doing you haven't done or you are promising to do or abstain from doing either case so whatever you are doing but it can it is at the desire of the promisor and it can be done by a promisee or any other person but it can be all the three past present and future that is what we mean by consideration and this is the definition given by section 2 sub section d right so moving forward what are the essentials based on this definition we are coming to the points what are the essentials like it is just a breaking down consideration must move at the desire of the promisor right that is what is there when at the desire of the promisor so it cannot move at the desire of any other person it should be at the desire of the promisor like if i am saying i am willing to buy like i am promising to buy your car so it should be at my desire that car is what is consideration for me so it is coming at my desire how i want it right that is what it is then it can be past present or future we looked into it done or abstain from doing does or abstains from doing promises to do or abstain from doing so all the three conditions are all the three situations are included then consideration must be real and not illusory yes if something that you are promising something that i'm getting in return is not real it is imaginary it is illusory we would not call it as consideration it should be true right it should be there it can it can be seen it can be felt all those conditions should be there it must be real next point says consideration may be an act to do something or abstain to do now there is a spelling error here also and i think somewhere else also yeah here also some spelling mistake is there so just kindly ignore this is spelling error part maybe somewhere a while copy pasting from somewhere i would have done this thing but yeah consideration may be an act to do something or abstain to do both the things are possible doing or not doing both the things are included then next point says consideration may be given by promisee or any other person it is not necessary that only 
promise he can give the it, it should be at the desire of the promise or that is important but consideration can be given by anybody promise he or anybody is allowed now there is a case law of uh, something called as chinaya versus ramaya so uh, just look at the text just have a read at it an old lady an old lady gave a certain property to her daughter ramaya with a condition that she must pay rupees 653 like some amount let's take some amount annually to chinaya who is brother of old lady later uh, r r means ramaya here we are trying to say refused to pay to chinaya to the ground that no consideration was given by chinaya now what is happening there is an old lady she is giving certain amount uh, uh, must uh, she is giving certain property to her daughter and there is a promise that this daughter should be paying some amount to this old lady's brother now there is an agreement between two parties between like you and me i am saying that i am giving my property to you in return you should be giving certain amount of money to my brother that is the contract now later on you refuse to give that money to the to my uh, brother now what happens the ground is uh, between uh, the, the uh, what we call it as the contract is between you and me but like uh, i have promised to give you my land my property in return i'm getting certain sum of money annually which is not coming to me which is going to third person now this third person is the beneficiary over here this third person my brother he is supposed to get amount from you but later on you refuse to give that amount why because you are saying that that this my brother is a third person there is no contract between my brother and you the contract was between you and me and since i am not any more over there so there is no liability so that is why it happens that it can be anybody it is at the desire of the promisor but it can be uh, moved from anybody promisee can be anybody it is not uh, important that promisee should be part of the contract right it was held that ramaya was liable to give annually to chinaya as consideration was given by old lady to ramaya that was again very much clear that consideration was given to you by some way or the other so it should be performed it is not like you know only the uh, promisee should be giving it can be anybody that is there so this is again one case law that is sometimes it, it is reflected certain questions are being asked of this situation certain examples are given like this so this case law is a uh, ground uh, be breaking ground for this thing right next point it says consideration need not be adequate now what is adequate can you define what is adequate adequate is something that something you feel adequate i may not feel it as adequate so we cannot define what is adequate that is why if you look at the condition of adequacy nobody will be ever happy that is why we are not considering the adequacy part so we are saying consideration need not be adequate we have already studied that law is coming from certain practices certain rituals certain you know uh, customs so just look at logic law is logical so just think logically can we define what is adequacy we cannot de define adequacy is very subjective it is very different for for each and every individual something that is adequate to you may not be adequate to me that is why we are saying consideration need not be adequate then we are saying consideration must be something which the promise uh, which the promisor a promisor is not already bound to do again there is uh, one space there should be so consideration must be something which the promisor is not already bound to do like i am already bound to do something and i am promising to do that as part of contract i am saying that this is the con consideration i am giving to you that is also not the case if you are already bound to do something then we cannot call it as consideration because that is not part of your contract even though there was no contract you were supposed to do it and you are saying i will give it to you i will do it for you as a part of contract so that will not be considered because anyhow whether contract is there or not whether agreement is th there or not whether promise is there or not you were already supposed to do that part that is why consideration cannot be something which you which the promise or as uh, was already bound to do right then consideration must be lawful that is important now what is lawful lawful is something that is not unlawful now we cannot define what is lawful because lawful is very wide so we are defining something that is unlawful so something which is not unlawful will be lawful for us so what is unlawful again we have already seen this part uh, something as unlawful but again we are saying what is unlawful something which is forbidden by law it is un uh, unlawful something which is fraudulent is unlawful something that implies you know that involves or implies injury to somebody or somebody's property that is unlawful something the nature of which is 
uh, such that it defeats certain provisions of a law that is unlawful and if the court specifically says that it is immoral or it is opposed to public policy is unlawful so these are one two three four five conditions for being unlawful one it is forbidden by law if it is fraudulent if it causes some injury to someone or somebody's property if it defeats certain provisions of any law or if it is against the public policy or immoral that is unlawful so if it is out of any of those things it will be unlawful and it would cannot be considered as consideration and no consideration means no contract that is i think our next provision yeah uh, before that there is one more uh, small concept called stranger to contract and stranger to consideration now as we are saying that a consideration can move from anybody it is not necessary that it should move from only by the promisee it can be from it can be given by promisee or any other person so there is a possibility to stranger to consideration if consideration is provided by any person who is not a party to a contract then promise is called the stranger to contract now why do we mean stranger to contract because the contract between the as the example of chinaiya and ramaiya the uh, contract was between two parties but there is a third person involved now this third person has nothing to do but still some part is going to that person that person has not done anything not promised not uh, not promised anything or not accept neither accept neither promised nor accepted anything so if that is the case this third person is of course getting some benefit out of it so this third person becomes a stranger to contract so now we are saying is stranger to contract is possible stranger to consideration is possible that we know because consideration can be given by anybody it is not necessary it is not mandatory that it should come from only the promisor or the promisee it can come from anybody like it should be at the desire of the promisor but given by anybody so according to section 2 sec, sub, uh, according to section 2 subsection d of the act consideration can move from promisee or any other person thus a person can be stranger to consideration right that is what i try, i'm trying to say that there is a possibility of stranger to consideration the principle of privity of contract a person who is not a party to contract cannot sue but there are a few exceptions somebody who is not party to the contract like if if that is the case if it is allowed like a stranger to contract is allowed if the stranger to contract can sue anybody then i can sue anybody randomly i am a third party i am a stranger to any contract entered by two persons like if there is an a, there is a uh, let, let's take there is an agreement there is a contract between uh, let's suppose future group and amazon and i don't like this contract i will just sue them because i am a stranger to contract that is why stranger to contract cannot sue right but there are few exceptions where stranger to contract can also sue stranger to consideration is possible that we know but stranger to contract is not allowed to sue that is what is called privity of contract you should also remember like some sometimes it becomes very important concept if when it comes to contract law privity of contract means a stranger to contract cannot sue but stranger to contract is possible because we are saying stranger to consideration means consideration is one very important aspect of contract and if we are saying stranger to consideration is possible that means stranger to contract is also possible but one condition is there that stranger to contract cannot sue but there are few exceptions where stranger to contract can also sue what are those exceptions here they are number 1 beneficiary in case of the trust or charge if some beneficiary is there who is going to receive certain benefit if a trust is created that is a different different story that is a different contract but somebody who is getting benefit out of that trust right or charge whatever it is created we are talking about the beneficiary beneficiary can yes there is no contract between beneficiary and the person uh there is a beneficiary is just a third person stranger to the contract but beneficiary can sue why because beneficiary is getting some benefit out of it then there is something called as marriage settlement petition or family state uh family settlements so what is this what hap- again uh, there is a one case of daropati versus jaspatral jaspatral so this case law is not that important uh, this is not uh, something which is common but uh, marriage settlement what happens like if there is a dispute there is a, what we call it as there is a, a a divorce we should say and there is a settlement pet- partition where uh, one person is supposed to get some money like uh, the husband let's suppose the husband is supposed to pay to his wife certain amount of money now in this case if the wife is not in the position of you know filing a suit it's possible that her family members like brothers or in-laws whoever is there they can also file a suit on her behalf even though they are stranger the contract was between husband and wife 
now till the time they were in relationship they were married they were engaged to each other that is something different but after the settlement there is a contract that this person is supposed to pay some money to that person but if that person is not getting strangers can also sue so in case of marriage settlement it is very much possible why it is possible because we have been living in a society where these things were practiced these things are practiced i should say right next one it is assignment of contract assignment of contract means if the person to the contract passes or dies we should say what after that there is a liquidator liquidator who will take care of the uh, property that liquidator can file like if there is a contract between like the same example like i promise to uh, you know buy your car for rupees 1 lakh now i bought your car and i promise that i will pay you after a month that 1 lakh but in between what happens like <laughs> i don't want you to die but imagine that the situation where uh, the person who is supposed to get that money dies so who will get that money now the person is not there i should say the contract is over the person to whom i was supposed to pay i would not pay because there is no person being existent so now the assign uh, this is something called as assignment now there will be a official liquidator or somebody who will uh, you know take care so that person is again stranger to contract is eligible to file a suit that is very much allowed next exception it says contract entered into through agency yes agent can also file a contract between agent uh, and principal is again there is something called as a special contract there we will learn about agency but in contract of agency a stranger who has no involvement but since because of the uh, rules of agency and uh, again uh, agent can file a uh, suit on behalf of principal principal can file on behalf of agent right those are the things now again we are saying something called as no consideration no contract yes this is the rule if there is no consideration there cannot be a contract without contract without consideration is void section 25 states that an agreement without consideration is void right so there cannot be now again there is a, mac, a latin maxim given as ex ex nudo pacto non author acto which means out of bare promise no cause of action arises it means if it is just a promise without you know any consideration if there is no consideration being involved between the promise if i'm saying yeah i will give you 100 crores you promise you will give me 1000 crores why are you giving why 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 am i giving you 100 crores crores to you and why are you giving back 1000 crores to me just a promise like just for fun we are saying so if something like that this is promised and later on uh, you file a suit against me that i am not giving you 100 crores and i fi i'm filing a suit against you that you're not giving me 1000 crores the first question that will arise is why we should do that it was just a bare promise there was no consideration being involved for each other so th it would not exist that is why no consideration means no contract that is the condition coming from section 25 but there are certain exceptions where without consideration also contract can be done so this is something called as exceptions to no consideration no contract this is the general rule that no consideration no contract there are exceptions where without consideration also contract can be done so number 1 agreement made on account of general love and affection so if there is a love and affection at that time contract can be done so there are again conditions an agreement made without consideration is valid under section 25 subsection 1 if provision number a it is made out of natural love and affection of parties standing in near relation to each other so natural love and affection should be there and there should be a near relation also and point number b a provision b says it must be in writing and registered under the law for the time being in force there's three conditions are there near relation natural love and it should be in writing and registered right so if these three conditions are satisfied then it should there should be natural love between near and dear like near relationship and the agreement should be registered that is what we are trying to say if that is the case without consideration also contract is possible again for this there is a, a case law between raj lakhi devi versus bhutnath mukherjee what happened in this this is a very funny scenario just have a look a written agreement between husband and wife where husband promised to provide for separate residence and maintenance to his wife on his failure to provide the same the wife sued him and claimed her rights to residence and maintenance under section 25 subsection 1 clause a now we should say we can uh, like uh, th these are the conditions which is the, 
husband is promising to provide for you know the uh, maintenance and residence of wife that is the con uh, condition why is uh, th there is an agreement between them that agreement is in writing and registered so provision b is satisfied there is no consideration in this but we are saying that it is an exception because they are husband and wife so we are assuming there is a natural love and of course husband and wife wife stand in near relation to each other so this is the scenario now what do you think what should happen what the what should be the judgment of the court yes just look at the judgment it was held by the court that section 25 subsection uh, yeah it should be subsection 1 clause a would not apply to the agreement as it was not made on account of natural love and affection how do we know that now this case law where we are talking about raj lakhi devi versus bhutnath mukherjee it was found that even though they are husband and wife they stand in near relation to each other and we assuming that there is natural love and affection however there was no natural love and affection how do we know that because it was held it was known from the neighbors that they used to fight there were quarrels between them that means if there are quarrels if they are fighting that is the reason right they are fighting so much that they don't want to live with each other and the wife decided to live separately and for that she is asking money from the husband that is the scenario and if that was the case if you want to live separately out of your husband how can you say there is a natural love and affection and you can ask for money without consideration right so that would not be considered so there is no natural love and affection again it violates the section uh, subsec uh, section uh, subsection 1 clause a it does not satisfy here again uh, in the second para it is sec uh, so section 25 subsection 1 clause a it would not apply because there is no natural love and affection that is the reason you are asking it sounds logical and it there were evidences there were people there were alibis which prove that there was no natural love and affection so this is an exception but again with this exception this is the case law that goes now second exception promises to pay for past voluntary services section 25 subsection 2 subsection 2 says promises to pay for past voluntary now something you have done something you have done for me in the past right voluntarily you have done in something you are doing voluntarily that means there is no contract you have done it for free but whatever you have done based on your doing i have promised to pay you now since there was no contract between us whatever you have done that was voluntary from your side to the charity as such we should say now this for your charity i am promising you to pay now this is the promise i am doing but without consideration but this is an exception in such a scenario where something has been done by somebody and for that there is a promise to pay that is very much allowed and that is very much legal as a contract under subsection 2 of the section 25 as exception to the maxim no consideration no contract right point number 3 promises to pay time barred debt time barred debt is something for which the time is over like debt debt means some money you are supposed to give me but the time is over now even after the time is over and you have promised that you will pay it so for that there is no asset performance there was a debt which was you were supposed to pay me you did not pay the time has elapsed there is something called as a limitation act the limitation act says what is the time limit and the time limit is over like let's suppose 10 years was the time limit and after 10 years we should say that now it's not possible that i will recover that money but after 10 years you are promising that you will pay now for this kind of promise again it can be held as an exception to no consideration no contract and it is very much valid even without consideration so uh, something called as completed gifts Com for completed gifts also we don't require any consideration and last but not the least is agency for contracts of agency also consideration is not required because there are certain other elements so these are certain exceptions right now unlawful consideration or unlawful object now consider section 21 says section 21 lays down that every agreement the object or consideration of which is unlawful is void if the consideration or object both are unlawful or any one of them is unlawful it is void so the word object means purpose or design why it is happening what is the purpose that is what do we mean by object so the agreement is void if the object or consideration is unlawful now how how do we know if it is unlawful this we have already seen this is again a repetition so something that is forbidden by law something that is forbidden something that involves or implies injury to somebody or somebody's property if 
such if the nature is that it defeats certain provisions of any law it is unlawful or it is against the public policy or it is immoral it is unlawful for both uh, whether it is consideration or object if these are the things then it becomes unlawful and if it is unlawful it is void right this is what we have studied